So the following example of a RH2ON Tableau integration is a demonstration of how you might use H2O as a back-end computation engine doing all the predictive analytics and statistical work in um, H2O, bringing the results back in something like R and Tableau and visualizing it for a front-end user who might not be as familiar with uh, machine learning analytics. This helps interpret complicated models um, with a simplified solution that a business user uh, who uses Tableau can actually use to make business decisions. So to start, uh, a little background on how this will work is H2O itself has a uh, R API. Uh, Tableau has a integration into R via a local socket server. So you can simply download and install a package called rserve, which you can uh, launch using library rserve and then running a rserve port or rserver. So we've picked here to run it on port 6311. And what this does is create a local R session that execute all the commands from calculated fields that are being sent from Tableau into R. And from there, we will have uh, Tableau load up an h tool library, as well as uh, create an initialization connection into uh, H2O and import data into H2O. So once you've actually ran the two command, which is essentially library R serve and run that R serve, uh, choosing a port where you want to launch that R server, you go into Tableau, go to the help window, Um, setting some performances and manage your R connection. Make sure you uh, were able to connect to the R serve service. Uh, hit OK. And what we're going to run is a demo off of a 16 noted uh, H2O cluster because the data set that we're about to use is about 152 million rows, uh, 26 years worth of airline data sets, trying to predict cancellations. So here, what we're going to do is uh, I can actually load up one of these uh, calculated fields. And what you'll see that is essentially what all we're running is an R, um, R script. So we'll do an h2o.init, which will initialize uh, the connection to this 16 node cluster. Uh, I pulled up perf bars for the 16 node cluster so that you see each blue box here is a node. Uh, each of the cores. Um, is a blue line in each of the box. Uh, so when work is actually being done on the machine, what you'll notice is uh, these green spikes up here. And so when I'm running computations, you should see all of the boxes sort of um, come up at the same time as it does the map part of the uh, work. And then as it reduces down, they should all become idle around the same time as well. To start, I will drag and drop the calculated field onto uh, the Tableau dashboard. And what this will do is send the expression over to R to be executed. And if you go back to R, you'll see uh, we've loaded up the h library. The output is there. And it'll say, finish setting up Tableau function. Next, uh, initialize h and parse the 152 million rows worth of airline data set into h uh, and this is something that you would never be able to do in Tableau because that size of the data is simply unsupported. But for H2O, what you see is a parallel read into uh, memory. And once that is done, what is returned back is maybe the head of the data set uh, or a simple summary of the data, which you can access from R, from Tableau, or from our front end web UI. So next, once we've actually imported the data set, let's say we want to do some simple calculations. Uh, let's say we want to know how many flights there are per month versus uh, how many flights there are out of uh, certain locations in the US, um, and maybe a ratio of the number of flights to the number of cancellations. So here, uh, in another calculated field, in about four lines of code, essentially, uh, it, will, it will do a group by of the original data set by month, uh, tell you how many flights there are per month as well as the number of cancellations per month. Then we're going to do a second group by on the original data set, this time on the origin point, calculating the number of um, 
flights out of each origin point, as well as the number of cancellation out of each origin point. Bring it back into uh, R as a R data frame, and that's something we can plot in Tableau. So we're just going to move this in over here. And what you're going about to see is essentially a group by that is incredibly fast. The first group by uh, splits the data set into 12 and do, it's, runs this calculation. The second one actually splits it into uh, subgroups of about 336 uh, and then compute those aggregates on the subgroup as well. So um, the group by itself took under two or three seconds and it's done. And so when we go to the next tab that I've opened here, this will essentially plot out those results that we've gotten back from R. And it'll have on, on the right-hand side uh, the flights by month. So these are in the millions versus on the left-hand side, this other uh, curve here, uh, it's by flight cancellation by month. So it's in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, so you get a ratio of the number of cancellations versus the number of total flights there are by month. And we similarly, we can do that for airports as well. Um, so we can sort this the way you would normally sort a bar chart in Tableau. So going back to parameter control here, the next step is to run a predictive model. So we're going to drag and drop run GLM. All the parameters are set on the dashboard. So you can actually go in and change the response variable, the predictor variables. Here we've set it so that we're predicting cancellations based on origin, destination, and the unique carrier. Uh, we're going to do a logistic regression, so the family is binomial. And what you see on the side here is H2O building the GLM model. And all the perf bars sparking up at the same time and coming down around the same time, uh, allowing you to build a GLM model, a logistic regression model, in the matters of 18 seconds uh, across all 152 million data points. So once you've finished building the model, the results are again returned back as an R data frame. And we can plot that in Tableau. So here I have the variable importance, or actually just the coefficients of that model uh, for origin. So we can do the same for destination as well as unique carriers. A positive coefficient means it's more likely to be canceled, and a negative coefficient means it's more likely to be delayed. So we can actually filter this to the top 10 or the bottom 10. Then what you can also do is create a heat map, which will actually uh, order your uh, coefficients, in this case, again, origin, um, by similar cities. So places like New York and um, where else? Portland uh, will have two airports. Um, and side by side, you can do a comparison of which airport in the two cities are more likely to be delayed. So if you have the option of flying from um, New York to San Jose uh, or San Francisco, would you rather fly from JFK or would you rather fly from LaGuardia? So the same coefficients and same information visualized differently. Um, and then finally, we have what H uh, Tableau can do is a geo map. So it maps all the coefficients to uh, a point on the United States map. We're going to filter out the null values here. And so what you get is only the positive and negative uh, non-zero non coefficients. Uh, and so you sort of start detecting patterns of um, can where things are more likely to be canceled. So things in the Northeast that tend to have a cluster of red, which is more likely to be canceled, whereas areas with better weather will tend to have less cancellations, with the exception that uh, really busy airports such as, um, for example, here, Dallas or San Francisco tend to have uh, more cancellations as well, probably because they are more congested uh, airports with a lot of connecting flights from um, places that are going to have more cancellations and more um, delays. And then aggregate everything into a single dashboard. And here you can filter uh, on one map and then um, that filter will carry over to the bar chart so you can sort of examine the coefficients more carefully if you select only the red um, airports. Once you've set up the initial few calculated fields by our user who knows how to translate our data frames into something Tableau can visualize, everything else is just pointing and clicking the way that you would expect from Tableau.